Hello and thank you for joining me. In this video, I will be creating an altered paintbrush featuring lots of goodies from Renee's shop. As always, all the goodies that I use will be listed in the, in the description box below. Here's a closer look at some of the bits that I'll be using from the shop. As you can see, I started with a four inch paintbrush that I picked up from my local hardware. And I did add a quick coat of clear gesso on that brush, just on the handle and the metal bits, leaving the bristles clear. So I didn't quite have the color that I wanted to use to match this heart that I chose. So I went ahead and I mixed a little bit of Finnebar's Impasto Azure Blue. I'm probably mispronouncing that, so go ahead and laugh to yourself, but it is what it is. Anyhow, I mixed the blue with a little bit of white heavy body acrylic and then I added a tiny bit of fluid medium just to make this pretty ice blue color and I did thin it out just that tiny little bit because I knew that I was going to add it to all the embellishments that I'm using as well so I needed it just to be a little bit easier to work with. So now that I'm finished painting the brush you can see that I'm adding the same color to all my little embellishments. I have some resin gears that I poured, some metal bits from my stash, and some beautiful board from Renee's shop. I'm trying to keep this as quick as possible, so I did skip ahead quite a bit, because I don't want you to have to watch me do all of this all together, but I do want you to have an idea of what I've done to create the brush. It's kind of, you know, not really sure what to cut and what to speed up, and. Who knows? You can't make everybody happy, right? Anyways, I digress. So here you can see that I start to add some chipboard to my brush. And then these two pieces here are actually part of a four set piece of chipboard. Um, they're called Butterfly Flourishes. Again, linked in the description box below. There I'm showing you that I'm using some heavy body gel and that's because I'm starting to add some of my bigger bits, um, like those metal wings that are a little bit heavy. And I just wanted to make sure that they weren't going to fall off at any point in time because I do hang my brushes on the wall and I don't want to get hit in the head with the wings. Side note, I know, anyhow. So I did build up those wings with a tiny clear um, button. You can kind of see it there a little bit. I know it's hard to see because the brush is monochromatic, but it's there. Anyhow, now I'm adding a little bit of white crackle paste. This is from Finnebar as well. And this paste, I do let air dry. So I get this on here and then I walk away and then I come back. I always let my crackle paste dry. The cracks just come out so much better. I'm not sure why. I have no idea if there's any scientific reason or if it's just me, but the cracks always look amazing if you just let it dry. So now I'm using Finnebar's Stormy Ocean Metallic paint and I'm just gonna dab it on and add some water to it and move it around until I'm happy with it. I'm primarily focusing on all the areas that I added the, the white crackle paste and that's just so there's not such a stark difference between the blues. I'm trying to keep everything pretty blue here. So as you can see I'm not doing anything specific. It's not a very detailed painting. I'm just dipping my brush into the paint, adding a little bit of water and moving it around wherever I want the water to flow. Just trying to guide it a little bit into all the little places that I want the paint to go. It's not a real scientific approach. It's not very detailed. It kind of feels organic, just like, I don't know, an easy flow kind of paint way. Anyhow, so now I'm going to repeat this process with this Sparks paint. I believe it's Mermaid Sparkle. I could be wrong, but I believe that's what it is. So like I said, I'm just going to continue to do this, add a little bit of paint, a touch of water, dab off my extra, and give it a quick dry. So once I'm happy with my paint placement, I'm gonna go ahead and dab off my extra water, and I'm going to give it a thorough dry with my heat tool. And that's why I'm gonna go ahead and show you me drying this, and it's because I really, really need to emphasize that for the next step, everything has to be dry, or your colors will get muddied up. Which brings me to my next step. I'm going to go ahead and use a fan brush and a little bit of heavy white gesso and I'm just adding a quick dry coat, um, I'm sorry, dry brush across the top of my embellishments and that's just kind of highlighting them a little bit more, accenting them, bringing them back to the surface a little bit. 
I'm adding a little bit of white to the bottom of the bristles just to tone the color down a little bit and soften the edges. And I'm going to continue dry brushing across the entire brush. And you'll see me to continue to do that. Now when my hand is, well, I'm sorry, when my brush is off camera, it's actually touching the top of my hand. And I'm just making sure that I don't have too much gesso on my brush because, you know, in this process, less is definitely more. And you want to make sure that you keep your brush very dry, um, very little paint on your brush. And you can see that I'm just continuing to dry brush all the embellishments, even the ones I haven't glued on yet. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of random stamping. And for this, I'm using a Stazon Gray. I believe it's called Cloudy Gray and a Scribble Stamp. This is one of Finnebar's old texture stamps. I don't even know if they make it anymore, to be honest. But I'm just randomly stamping. Next, I'm going to add a tiny touch of splatter, and that's just a little bit of the Finnebar Sparks paint with a touch of water, and that's just to add a little bit of sparkle. So now I'm showing you again that I'm using heavy body gel to adhere all my larger pieces. So eventually I'm going to get these pieces all together. But I did have a little bit of a hard time getting that flourish tucked where I wanted it to be. So I had to cut the very tip point of that off to get it stuck where I wanted it to be because I did need it to be level. And my balancing act there took a little bit longer. So it got clipped a little bit in the camera. I hope that makes sense. But anyhow, as you can see, I'm configuring my focal point now. It's a little flourish off the side. The wings, the gear topped off with the dragonfly. Now I'm going to add just a touch more to the dragonfly. That's a little bit of glossy accents and one of Renee's tiny, um, I believe they're beautiful bits and this is a heart. And I'm adding a tiny touch of sparks paint to it just to add a little bit more to the focal point. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue to move my glossy accents around my brush and this is where I'm going to sprinkle all my beads and my glitter into. I've used a mix of teal, white, and crushed diamond. Um, so the teal and white were beads and then the crushed diamond is a glitter. And you're just going to see me sprinkle that. So you know it looks like my hands just you know over the brush and you can't really tell what I'm doing. But this is part of the process and I. I can't emphasize enough how much the little extras add to a project like this. I mean, when you're looking at it like this, it doesn't look like much, but it really does add that extra wow factor to your projects. Anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed this project and my process. If you have, please consider to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Thanks again. Bye-bye.